All right, you guys, in your last set of notes, we completed the square when the coefficient on our x squared, the a um, coefficient, was equal to 1. So now we're going to be getting into values where we are actually greater than 1. So our essential question for this set of our notes, when the leading coefficient is greater than 1, what do, we, what do I do? Well, before completing the square, we always have to check to make sure that it is not factorable. So let's actually check. Um, that's always going to be the first step. So first step, um, how to complete the square, um, we so that the previous one right here. This is what we should be checking for every time. And then the actual steps are very similar to um, completing the square. The regular steps, I believe we wrote down the same ones. So the coefficient of the squared term must be divided out so that it is equal to 1. Um, so we're going to force that coefficient on the x squared to become 1. Then we're going to add or subtract the constant to the other side of the equal sign if it's not already. And then we're going to add the value of half of your b value, and then we square it. So that's what you're going to add to both sides of your equation. Um, and then that factor, then you're going to factor the left side and simplify the right side, making sure that when you factor that left side, we're going to leave it in the vertex form here. Let's write that down. I should say vertex form. And that's what you want that left side to be. Um, then once we take the square root of both sides, and then we're going to solve the equation for the variable just like we have been in class, um, simplifying our radicals. Okay, so we're going to go over our first example here. Um, so the first thing I want to do is try and figure out if um, I have 4x squared minus 16x, if I were to bring that 76 over, it would be a positive 76. I need to see if I have any of my um, factors. So when I do 4 times 76, I end up getting 304. And then I have the negative 16 here. I need to figure out if this is factorable first. And I am unable to find any factors. I was doing it like divided by 4, then I divided it by 8. So 4 got me uh, 4 and 76 will not get me 16, negative 16. Then I divided uh, the 304 by 8. Um, that gets me 38 and 8. That will only get me 30 or 46. Um, then I also tried 304 divided by 16. I'm just trying all different numbers. 16 and 19 won't get me negative 16 either. If you guys think of one, let me know. I'll give you extra credit on um, if you were able to factor this or not. Okay, so I am going to erase this because it's not factorable. So we are unable to do that. So that means that we now have to use the completing the square method. Um, so the since our value here is greater than 1, we actually need to go through and divide out everything by that coefficient. So when I have 4 divided by 4, I'm left with x squared. Negative 16 divided by 4, I'm left with a negative 4x. I'm going to leave some space here because I'm going to be adding something to both sides. And then that negative 76 divided by 4 is a negative 19. Okay, I'm going to do some side work over here. Um, the side work that I will have to do is to figure out what I need to add to both sides. Um, so if I go back and see my step number 2, um, I add or subtract the constant to the other side. Well, our constant was already on our other side, so voila, we're done. And then now my third step, I need to add the value, which was half of b squared, to both of those sides. So let's do that now. My b value is right here, and including that negative 4. So I'm going to do my side work over here. So I have negative 4 divided by 2, and then we're going to square it. Um, let, before I square it, let me actually show you what this equals. So negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Now I get to square that. The reason why I want to show this is because that's going to be my factor on my left side. Um, so when I do negative 2 squared, I am now adding 4. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. And now this says our next step is to factor it, which I'm going to leave it in vertex form though, because what this factor means is that I have x minus 2 times x minus 2. And if I were to actually distribute this, x times x would be x squared x times negative 2 would end up being a negative 2x, negative 2x, negative 2x plus negative 2x is a negative 4x, and a negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. So that's if, so, and instead of actually writing out two of these, 
Remember in vertex form, we actually just write out that we have it's squared. So x minus 2 squared. That's how we leave it in vertex form. Simplify your right side. So negative 19 plus 4 is a negative 15. Okay. Now we're going to go through and simplify these things just like we would when we're solving for x. So we are going to take the square root of both sides. And we have x minus 2 equals the square root of negative 15. I am not done yet. Um, I cannot actually take the square root of negative 15. However, we can simplify that negative 1 inside the radical because we know the square root of negative 1 is i. Don't forget it's a plus and a minus because we actually added that square root. And then my last step is to add 2 to both sides. So now I have x equals 2 plus or minus i square root 15. And that is how you complete the square when we have a coefficient that is greater than 1 for that x squared. So just a little recap, you guys. Um, the, the two main steps for this one, always check to make sure it's factorable first because that would be the easiest method to actually um, solve for your x-intercepts or your zeros or your solutions or roots. Um, and if it's not, then you have to use completing the square and we will be getting into um, the quadratic formula. So if something is not factorable, you will be completing the square or using the quadratic formula. For this case, you are currently um, learning how to complete the square. Have a good day. I'll see you in class.